our question, conversation question, is the U.S. becoming a police state? What do you think about this? 202 is the area code for Republicans, 585-3881. For Democrats, 585-3880. Independents, 585-3882. And if you live outside the U.S. and you're watching us, you can dial in and participate in this conversation as well, 585-3883. You can also make a comment via social media. At CSPANWJ is our Twitter handle. You can continue this conversation on Facebook where a lively conversation is already going on, facebook.com slash C-SPAN, or you can send us an email at journal at cspan.org. Now again, the Edward Snowden angle is part of what we want to talk about, but there are other, there are other aspects to this, security, uh, stop and frisk, um, local police uh, departments, et cetera, that you can include in your conversation as well. This is an article that appeared in Mother Jones on December 9th. How Every Part of American Life Became a Police Matter is the title of this article. And uh, this is Chase Matter. If all you've got is a hammer, then everything starts to look like a nail, he writes. And if police and prosecutors are your only tool, sooner or later, everything and everyone will be treated as criminal. This is increasingly the American way of life, a path that involves solving social problems and even some non-problems by throwing cops at them with generally disastrous results. Wall-to-wall -wall criminal law encroaches ever more on everyday life as police power is applied in ways that would have been unthinkable just a generation ago. By now, the militarization of the police has advanced to the point where the war on crime and the war on drugs are no longer metaphors but bland understatements. There is the proliferation of heavily armed SWAT teams even in small towns, the use of shock and awe tactics to bust small-time bookies, the no-knock raids to recover trace amounts of drugs that often result in the killing of family dogs, if not family members, and in communities where drug treatment programs once were key, the waging of a drug version of counterinsurgency war. All of this is ably reported on journalist Radley Balco's blog and in his book, The Rise of the Warrior Cop. But American over-policing involves far more than the widely reported armoring up of your local precinct. It is also the way police power has entered the DNA of social policy, turning just about every sphere of American life into a police matter. It starts in our schools, where discipline is increasingly outsourced to police personnel. What not long ago would have been seen as normal childhood misbehavior, doodling on a desk, a kindergartner's tantrum, can leave a kid in handcuffs, removed from school, or even booked at the local precinct. Such criminals can be as young as seven-year-old Wilson Reyes, a New Yorker who was handcuffed and interrogated under suspicion of stealing $5 from a classmate. Turned out he didn't do it. Though it's a national phenomenon, Mississippi currently leads the way in turning school behavior into a police issue. That's just a little bit from the beginning of his article. We'll go through a little bit more of it as we go this morning. But we want to hear from you whether or not you think the U.S. is a police state or is becoming a police state. We're going to begin with a Democrat in Carnegie, Pennsylvania, Patrick. Good morning, Patrick. How are you? Fine. Uh, not only is the United States creating a police state, but how the acquisition of over two billion bullets, hollow point bullets by Homeland Security, uh, 3,000 mine resistant armored vehicles by Homeland Security. Uh, it is the modern version of the Gestapo, and the American people are looking at a a new form of totalitarianism that is compartmentalized, that is corporatized, in order to make it blameless to 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 say to 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 say that one arm doesn't know what the other arm is doing, and yet and yet the concentration camps are being built, and the American people are going to be placed in them when when they when they choreograph uh, yet another false flag operation on this country which uh, I can tell you the corporatized direction begins and ends with the state of Israel and the Israel factory. That's Patrick in Carnegie, Pennsylvania. We're talking about the police state here in America. William Seminole, Alabama, independent line. William, go ahead. 
Yes, we are already in a police state. To give you an example, I live in Baldwin County, Alabama, next to the Gulf of Mexico. We are the only county in the United States of America this year. One of our state senators got with the sheriff, and they passed a law that no one in the county is eligible, although to run for sheriff of Baldwin County. The new law states that you have to be the sheriff or the sheriff deputy. In other words, then you've got to be not an ex-deputy that retired. You've got to be current employed to be uh, eligible to run for sheriff. You can run for senator. You can run for congressman. But we are living in a dictatorship already and uh, until someone changes the law in Montgomery, Alabama. Thank you. Bubba. Tremont, Mississippi, Republican line. Hi, Bubba. Hi, how you doing? Good. What do you think? Well, I think we are becoming more of a police state. Uh, and the way the government is now, we're coming to more of a communist state, too. Uh, I do not like no president, no government that's going to tell me that I've got to buy insurance through them. And if I don't, I get penalized, fined, or whatever. Now, I mean, and Obama, he he just don't he just don't care, or he puts I don't know I wouldn't uh, told directly to things that's going on, like the NSA spying. All right, Bubba, thank you for like calling in. We appreciate it. Well, Senator Ron Wyden talked about this issue back in July at the Center for American Progress. Now, after 9-11, when 3,000 of our fellow citizens were murdered by terrorists, there was a consensus that our country needed to take decisive action. At a time of understandable panic, the Congress gave the government new surveillance authorities. But the Congress also attached an expiration date to these authorities so that they could be deliberated more carefully once the emergency, once the immediate emergency had passed. Yet in the decade since, the law has been extended several times with no public discussion about how the law has actually been interpreted. The result, the creation of an always expanding, omnipresent surveillance state that now chips away needlessly at the liberties and freedoms our founding fathers established for all of us. And it's all done without the benefit of actually making us safer. And here's a Quinnipiac University poll that asks the question, is the federal government restricting civil liberties? And the total responding says 45% say yes, 41% on the GOP side, 43% on the Democrat side, and 54% of independents say yes. Now here's part of the conversation that's going on on our Facebook page right now. First of all, you can take uh, part in a poll. You can vote, is the U.S. a police state? Yes and no. You can see the yeses there are are more than the no's. And here are some of the comments that we're getting. Darren says, yes, especially for blacks and browns. Daniel says, if you think the U.S. is a police state, you probably have not been outside North America. And a couple more comments. Jeff says, all I can say is know your rights and know the laws in your states. And here's another one. Um, Jeff says, no, we are not a police state unless you are a paranoid or a criminal. And Patrick says, well, it isn't getting better. While we are no North Korea, the level of surveillance on American citizens and laws forced on the American people aren't steps in the right direction. And abuse of power, Mike says, is not an isolated incident. It happens every day in every town and city in this country. Those are some of the comments. If you want to continue that conversation, facebook.com slash C-SPAN. Maureen is a Democrat calling from Chicago. Hi, Maureen. Hi. 
You know, I'm concerned about the uh, intrusive cre- the creation of intrusive databases on children in um, K through 12 grades. There's one in particular known as In Bloom, which is funded by Bill Gates, developed by Rupert Murdoch, and managed by Jeff Bezos' companies. Um, that is very intrusive. It can collect as many as 400 different data points on each child. It will include information on their mental and physical health issues, discipline issues, social issues like divorce or homelessness, as well as academic issues, including test results. And testing has exploded in the K through 12 grades. Um, InBloom is not the only database being developed like this. Nine states had originally signed up for InBloom. Seven have dropped out, the most recent being Illinois. New York still seems to be involved. Uh, it's The person I read on these issues is Audrey Waters, who blogs at Hacked Education. She's an excellent analyst of the um, development of new All right, Maureen, thank technology. you for sharing that information. Carl Hedge. Hedgesville, West Virginia, Republican line. Carl, what do you think? Is the U.S. becoming, or is it a police state in your view? Well, in a way it is, because when the administration used the IRS to silence the Tea Party, you know, that's that's getting pretty scary. And even uh, senators like Chuck Schumer and, and some of those big senators over there wrote letters to the IRS demanding that they silence the Tea Party before the election, that's that's getting pretty scary with our government. That's my opinion. Daniel, Vancouver, Washington, Democrats line. Daniel, you're on the Washington Journal. Hello, thank you. Uh, yes, we are becoming a police state. Uh, let's take a walk backwards to see how this happened. 9-11 was the trigger that set us on this path. Uh, 9-11, it, uh, it's interesting that Senator Wyden from Oregon was just on there discuss, uh, discussing that uh, the fact that there has been no discussion of uh, uh, public input into uh, this state of affairs that we're uh, faced with today. Uh, 9-11 happened because Israel... Uh, uh, Daniel, because what does this we have to do with Israel, really? We were attacked by Nothing. Israel on 9-11. All right, we're going to uh, let Daniel go. He's one of the 9-11... Truthers, that's not what we're talking about this morning. Back to the Mother Jones article, do we live in a police state? The term police state was once brushed off by mainstream intellectuals as the hyperbole of paranoids. Not so much anymore, even in the tweediest precincts of the legal system, the overcriminalization of American life is remarked upon with greater frequency and intensity. You're probably a federal criminal is the accusatory title of a widely read essay co-authored by Judge Alex Kaczynski of the Ninth Circuit of the U.S. Court of Appeals. A Republican appointee, Kaczynski surveys the morass of criminal laws that make virtually every American an easy target for law enforcement. Veteran defense lawyer Harvey Silverglate has written an entire book about how an average American professional could easily commit three felonies in a single day without knowing it. The daily overkill of police power in the U.S. goes a long way toward explaining why more Americans aren't outraged by the excesses of the war on terror, which, as one law professor has argued, are just our everyday domestic penal habits exported to more exotic venues. It is no less true that the growth of domestic police powers is, in this positive feedback loop, the partial result of our distant foreign wars seeping back into the homeland the imperial boomerang that Hannah Arendt warned against. That's from Mother Jones. You can find it online at their website. This is from the Guardian newspaper out of London a little bit uh, earlier this fall. America's police are looking more and more like the military. America's streets are looking more and more like a war zone. Last week in a small county in upstate New York with a population of roughly 120,000 people, County legislators approved the receipt of a 20-ton mine-resistant ambush-protected MRAP vehicle donated by the U.S. Defense Department to the county sheriff. Between the armored personnel carriers locking down main streets in major American cities, mimicking our MRAPs in Afghanistan, or special weapons and tactics SWAT and special forces units canvassing our country, 
if we're not careful, this militarization of our domestic policing will make over America and fast. Here's how it all happened. The little-known Pentagon program has been quietly militarizing American police forces for years. A total of $4.2 billion worth of equipment has been distributed by the Defense Department to municipal law enforcement agencies with a record $546 million in 2012 alone. Again, that's just the beginning of this article from The Guardian. If you're interested in reading it for yourself, Alex is calling on our Republican line from Miami. Alex, good morning. Uh, good morning. How are you? Good. Um, yeah, um, as far as the police state issue, it's only for the citizens of this country. I mean, as far as immigrants, because in Miami, there's 59 percent of the population is foreign born. They get to roam free. And then when I tell them exactly how it works here, they're in total, dish, total shock. So, yes, it, it is a police state, but only for U.S. citizens. I mean, as far as immigrants are concerned, they get to roam free. They get to go wherever they want. In fact, I've been challenged by police, and they let the immigrant go away freely. And it, it's, not, it's, not pretty, it's not pretty at all. So that's my take on it. All right. Um, that's Alex. Diane is in West Point, Georgia. Democrat. Diane, go ahead. Yes. Um, and... Um, answer to your question about is it becoming a police state no i don't think so i think we need all of the surveillance that we can get and going back to 9 11 that's what sort of ticked it off or started it you know we have people who are here that are living crazy i mean if they're listening to my conversation i'm not a criminal i don't care you know if they're other than watching me looking at me on my tv i would probably have some opposition to that other than that i'm just i'm perfect with it and Snowden, I don't understand. We're, we're talking about a topic that he is introducing. Why they, if there's so much surveillance, how do they miss him? How do they miss him? He left with all this information. I mean, if we have such high-tech, you know, uh, observation, how did he go under the radar? And if he was going to do such a good job, why is he not here? You know, if he wants to let us know what's going on, tell us here. Don't go someplace else. Diane in West Point, Georgia, thanks for calling in this morning. This is uh, Walter Pincus's column in the Washington Post. He's been covering intelligence for 40 years or so. In Snowden's wake, an unpre unprecedented rule to consider public opinion on intelligence gathering. The prime reason for secrecy, Mr. Pincus writes, is that you don't want the targets to know what you're doing. But often in democracies, another reason is that you don't want your citizens to know what their government is doing on their behalf to keep them secure as long as it's within their country's law. Accountability and secrecy are two watchwords a former senior intelligence official said guided operations during his 40-year career, not whether the public would approve of everything he was doing. However, that's not what President Obama's review group on intelligence and communications technology said last week after its study of intelligence gathering in the wake of disclosures generated by former NSA contractor Edward Snowden's leaking of tens of thousands of previously secret NSA documents. The president's five-member panel called for reinstituting what it called the front page rule, which it described as an informal precept long employed by the leaders of U.S. administration. It said such activities should not be undertaken if the public couldn't support them if exposed. In some 40 years of covering intelligence, Walter Pincus writes, I have never heard of such a rule, nor have several former senior intelligence officials with whom I have talked. The closest we recalled is the old rule of plausible deniability, which came out of the CIA in the 1950s, after President Dwight Eisenhower had to backtrack after publicly denying knowledge of the intelligence purpose of U-2 flights over Russia after one was shot down. Plausible deniability in CIA rhetoric was an approach that allowed a president to deny knowledge of an intelligence operation that went bad by saying he knew nothing about it, leaving those carrying out the activity to take the blame for failure or exposure. It's a little bit of his column this morning in the Washington Post. Tony, District Heights, Maryland, here in the suburbs on our independent line. Tony, you're on the Washington Journal. What's your opinion? Yeah, I believe I believe this country is becoming a police state, uh, and you're you're kind of like a prime example of that in a minor way, sir. Because I I noticed while listening that you like to cut callers off that have an opinion about 
maybe why it's becoming a police state when it comes to uh, the issue of 9-11 in Israel. You'll give them a half a second on 9-11. You won't give them any time if they mention Israel. And it's a shame. But I'm going to tell you something else. Terrorism is a business, folks. And that's just the way it is, like war. It's a never-ending war. But a lot of companies are making money off of terrorism, especially the Defense Department. It's a lifestyle for the rich and shameless. Some die with the name, some die nameless. That's Tony in District Heights, Maryland. And this is Lynn in Halethorpe, Maryland, on our Republican line. Lynn, go ahead with your comment. Uh, yes, I do believe uh, it's, we do live in a police state. Um, I was shopping on uh, Christmas Eve night, uh, and I don't know if people know this or not, but they actually have these uh, unmanned drones that actually are in the air that uh, track your movements. That's only one aspect. They are uh, actually not only uh Data, you're collecting the data of the emails and the phone calls. They're actually reading your emails and listening to your phone calls in real time. I mean, this this thing is really getting completely crazy. Uh, they're actually um, just spying on people. I just actually had not too long ago a virus put into my computer. So they're 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 just it's just getting really crazy. And we the government uh, will actually Congress needs so to really So you're saying that you saw a drone or that a drone is following Oh yeah, you? that's right. Because I am in a, Maryland. Uh, I am actually a member of the Stop Spying, you know, the different groups, and they actually have, if you look at some of the websites, uh, Electronic Foundation Frontier and the ACLU, they'll give a whole list of different um, programs about the drones. They actually have them. In Maryland, they have them all over. You wouldn't know because most people don't look up in the, up in the air. But if you actually look up in the air, you see these little lights up there flying around, and it's all coordinated with Lynn, uh, what, GPS. What? What group are you a member of, did you say? Oh, the Stop Watching Us and the Electronic uh, Frontier Foundation, the ACLU, they all have this information on the website. Most people are not aware about the different su surveillance programs that are going on because most people do not actually read these websites, but people really have to get more informed, and especially African Americans, because most of these programs, unfortunately, are put in the urban areas, and they really target minorities. So I know a lot of African American people want to uh, support the president, but they really need to wake up, because this really has nothing to do with President Obama. It's just about that these programs need to to be curtailed, and right. I am definitely a hero of uh, Edward Snowden. That's Thank you. Lynn in Maryland. Here's several of our Twitter comments. Jan Ness, I remember when a domestic disturbance in my neighborhood brought out the SWAT team. And Wheat says, we are not becoming a police state. We are becoming a techno state. Get off the grid if you want more privacy. And here's Linda. They may be listening to us, but I don't see anyone being arrested. And Fish and Sam says, why does a town of 20,000 need an armored mind resistant truck? And Vivian says, I think Snowden would look good in orange. He fancies himself as the next great Julian Assange. And one more comment. Here's Edwin. We have been a police state since the passage of the Patriot Act. It took most of our rights away from us. Those are some of the comments we're receiving on Twitter. Bob in Beachwood, Ohio, what do you think? Thank you very much for taking my call. I've been waiting to speak to someone for years about this situation. I, I definitely think it's a police state. For example, if you would let me finish my statement before you cut me off, we had here in Ohio, Cleveland, Ohio, matter of fact, two innocent people who did not have no weapons, no guns, no drugs, or whatever. And the car backfired, and like 15 police cars tracked them down. They shot inside the car. 137 times of bullets, ripping those two innocent people uh, to death. And they covered it up here in Ohio. No one has said anything about it. This is one of the worst things that ever happened to this country. When they found out that people didn't have no guns, no drugs, and the guy who was driving is a very religious type person. So you, no matter how they had talked about you this morning. I just want to say thank you for letting us be expressed this here in Ohio. Here the whole country 
don't know anything about this stuff. And this has been going on. This happened years ago. He said a year and a half. And those people has died because of the police sit up there. And one police got on top of the car, unloaded his automatic weapon, and reloaded again and shot and took those people's life. Thank you very much. Merry Christmas to you. And thank you for letting me express this on C-SPAN. This is in Cleveland, Ohio. Tim, Shamokin, PA, Independent Line. Tim, go ahead with your comment. Hi. I, I think there's really two aspects to uh, this problem of U.S. becoming a police state. Um, I think it's undeniable that it is. I think that there's a federal side to it um, with the NSA and that type of thing. Um, and unfortunately, people like Diane, who called about five minutes ago, who think along the lines of, I'm not doing anything wrong, so it's not really that big of a deal, that's going to end up really hurting America down the road when these laws get set into place that, that allows it. It's laying a framework that could really destroy America if a bad person came in, into uh, power. Um, and then there's a local side in terms of police officers who I believe are educated to not have any discretion or common sense at all. Um, we saw kids getting arrested for running lemonade stands and that type of thing. And I, I just think that they're taught that way so that the, the higher-ups on a local level can have control over how they act. And it's not going to get any better. It's going to get a lot worse before it does. Thank you. From Newsmax, uh, Ray Kelly, the NYPD commissioner, did an interview. The headline, Stop and Frisk Can Never Be Eliminated. Wanda Carruthers writes that outgoing New York City Police Commissioner Ray Kelly insisted Monday of this week that controversial stop and frisk policies can never be eliminated as a crime-fighting measure despite Mayor-elect Bill de Blasio's questioning of the program. Quote, it will not be eliminated, I can assure you, so it's going to be a practice that will continue. We'll see what sort of changes or amendments can be done to it, Kelly said Monday on MSNBC's Morning Joe. Kelly called the police an important tool, uh, called the policy an important tool police officers have in their toolkit, despite U.S. District Judge Shira Scheinland's ruling in August limiting the pol policy's implementation out of concern that it is being used as an indirect form of racial profiling. The ruling has since been put on hold pending an appeal. Kelly said de Blasio would make the decision on whether the appeal would continue. Quote, I think it's fair to say that a lot of things are unknown about the mayor elect, so we'll find out, Kelly said. Kelly attributed the dramatic drop in the murder rate in New York City to diligent work by the police department. The rate for 2013 is well below 400, currently standing at 329. Byron is calling from Cleveland, Tennessee on our Republican line. Byron, do you think the U.S. is becoming a police state? Yes, I do. Right. And I, I will explain why. Uh, we have a lot of progressives in Congress and the Senate, and you just had one of the senators on that was a progressive. And, uh, and uh, are you there? Yeah, we're listening, sir. you got to turn down the volume okay. and just go ahead and talk. I, and uh, you had one of the progressives. Oh, you know, you know, nobody ever questions what progressive really are, but they're progressives are socialists or communists, and uh, you can get a lot of this information from the Communist Party USA webpage, and uh, people need to investigate those. Uh, the, the difference between the communists and socialists, uh, socialists use a backdoor approach. They'll go in and have laws implemented that directly affects our uh, country. The economists are more militant, so uh, there's a big difference, you know, in the way they act, but their objectives are the same. That's Cle Thank you. Byron in Cleveland, Tennessee calling. This is an article on the front page of the uh, New York Times. It's maybe, maybe related, maybe not related. You can make that judgment. In a car culture clash, it's the Los Angeles police versus pedestrians. In a city of seemingly endless highways with its daily parade of car accidents, frustrating traffic jams, and aggressive drivers, the L.A. Police Department these days is training its sights on a different road menace, jaywalkers. It is not quite dragnet, but the police department in recent weeks has issued dozens of tickets to workers, shoppers, and tourists for illegally crossing the street in downtown L.A. And the crackdown is raising questions about whether the authorities are taking sides with the long dominant automobile here at the very time when a pedestrian culture is taking off, fueled by the burst of new offices, condos, hotels, and restaurants, 
rising in downtown Los Angeles. The enforcement has struck many of the pedestrians, the new kids on the block, as more than a little one-sided and strikingly strict. When Adam Bialik, a bartender, stepped off the curb on his way to work at the Ritz-Carlton a few blinks after the crossing signal began its red don't walk countdown, he was met by a waiting police officer on the other side of the street and issued a ticket for $197. Quote, I didn't even know what was against the law, he said. I was like, you are the LAPD and this is what you are doing right now? One other example in this story, Jeff Grotke, 49 years old, a bankruptcy lawyer who works downtown, said he crossed a street mid-block on the way to bankruptcy court when there was not a car in sight. He was stopped by two officers and given a ticket. Quote, honestly, I cussed them out for about five minutes, he said. I told them what a stupid waste of time this was, and wasn't it great that they had two police officers standing there when there are obviously more important issues out there. That's just a little bit from the New York Times this morning. John in Annapolis, Maryland, Democrat, what do you think about all this? Well, I can't believe you're even asking the question at this point because, um, I mean, it's been a police state the whole country for a very long time. I mean, right down from, like, bumper stickers being probable cause to pull somebody <laughs> over for no reason to the, like, oh, fake, I smell marijuana from your vehicle, and then two or three police cars, like, pulling up and flashing lights and everything and pulling guns. I mean, you take the examples of uh, Fruitvale Station and also the uh, FBI shooting of uh, the person in Florida that they say was connected to the Boston bombing. It's, it's just incredible. I mean, even the Boston bombing when they had, like, you know, full-on military vehicles patrolling the streets. I mean, that was a horrible incident that happened. I understand their, you know, a caution and everything, but I'm just talking about my personal everyday life for having a, a Grateful Dead bumper sticker and just being pulled over for that. Basically, I say, hey, why am I being pulled over? And they're just like driver's license and registration. We think we smell marijuana. Can you get out of the car and having a couple different police officers in different cars pull up and everything? I, I just, I really, uh, I'm, I'm appalled by it. I, I just can't believe that our country has come to this at this point. I mean, I. I All right, listen, we're going to leave it there. That's John in Annapolis, Maryland. A couple more Twitter comments. Ariel Baum says, what law do you want to get rid of? DWI, EPA, so you can pour your motor oil on my land? Voting rights, auto f automatic fire firing weapons? And John in NC says, the first step in becoming a police state is conditioning the population to become dependents of the state. We're almost there. Here's Jean Doe. If one doesn't like stop and frisk, keep out of New York. And Danny says, police and government are not my friends, and corporations now are our oppressors. Adam says, every search, text, email, tweet, and purchase is used to map your behavior to assess if you're a threat. Who watches the watchman? Uh, Victor, Snowden needs to shut up already. You elect to have all those cameras on phone, computer, and whatnot. Privacy was given up by you. And... One more Jean Doe comment, uh, U.S. not becoming a police state is a police state and has been since FDR. And here is Dean, how can the simple mass collection program compare with the massive amounts of data collected by private companies? And finally, this comment by BC Venice, careful what you say, they are watching our tweets. David, in Brooklyn, Ohio, Independent Line, what do you think? Yes, uh, good morning. Hi. I do believe that our country is turning more into a police state. I agree wholeheartedly with what uh, Tony from uh, D.C. said and Bob from Beachwood, uh, speaking of the, the shooting that took place in uh, East Cleveland uh, a year and a half ago. Um, it seems to me that C-SPAN used to be, it's supposed to be funded uh, by cable to, um, to express its opinions, but it seems to me like it's more funded by the Council of Foreign Relations and the CIA. Um, and 
as far as um, the police are concerned, anything you say or do will be used against you in a court of law. So right there, they, they are setting the precedent that they are there to arrest you and to um, indict you. Um, all, all police are Freemasons, and our country is turning into, uh, uh, it seems to be run by Freemasons. Um, a lot of uh, uh, like skull and bones are in Freemasonry, uh, Knights Malta, Knights Templar. A lot of these factions, these, these these cults, are at the top of the food chain, and they're the ones that are driving the agenda. And except for uh, convenient locations, such as the Tucson shooting, it took 12 minutes for the first police to arrive in Tucson. Now, why would they, why would it take 12 minutes for the first police to arrive in Tucson when there was a gathering there on a Saturday morning? I mean, where are the police on a Saturday morning? They should be protecting that poor little congressman who got shot and the Judge Roll who got killed. Thank you. Edward is calling from Keyport, New Jersey, on our Republican line. Edward, what's your opinion? Uh, yeah, how you doing? Um, well, first I want to say it's shocking that probably 9 out of 10 callers are saying it's a police state and that this should be a more outrageous uh, fact. But I want to say that they're criminalizing the poor with the drug war. It's easier to get a criminal record than it is to get an education. They should have took that $5 billion they spent on automatic weapons and tried to help people with it instead. Maybe we wouldn't have the outward effect of crime and uh, these issues. So that's my comment, and thank you, Steve Ben. And just FYI, tomorrow on the Washington Journal, we're going to talk about the war on drugs. Danny, Gilbert Town, Alabama, Democrat, what's your thought? Yes, I don't think these people really even know what a police state is, really. You still have your freedom to say what you want to, to go where you want to, carry your guns. And if it was a police state, you wouldn't even be hearing this talk on, on TV right today. Thank you. Thank you, Danny. Gilbert Town, Alabama. Well, coming up on the Washington Journal, two authors.